Good evening, citizens of Portsmouth and my colleagues on council. Thank you for joining us this evening. I will now ask everyone to stand for a moment of silence. Um, before, before we all stand, as we stand, I would like to read something to you all. If you would please take this moment of silence to remember a lost member of our Portsmouth family, retired Sergeant Richard Lodge passed away. He retired from the police department in 2012 with 47 years of service, the longest serving officer in the city of Portsmouth. He also was the Sergeant of Arms at city council for over 20 years. Let us remember our brother and our family member. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Once again, thank you all. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Present. Mr. Hugel. Present. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Here. Mr. Moody. Here. Mr. Tillett. Here. Dr. Whitaker. Present. Mayor Glover. Here. We have the minutes of a called meeting February 14th, 2023, and a regular meeting February 14th, 2023. Do I have a motion and a second? Move adoption. Second. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Hugel. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillich. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Madam Clerk, would you please read the speaker rules for tonight? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, city council rules require a limit of up to five minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice a timer. At the beginning of your five minutes, you will see a green light. Four minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of five minutes, you will see a red light, hear a beep, and we ask that you conclude your comments at that time. While speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern, all comments should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the forum and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. All remarks shall be directed to the city council as a body rather than any particular member of city council, staff, or the audience, and should be limited to matters that only the Portsmouth City Council can influence. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of decorum would be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. We have now come to item 23-59, and it is a public hearing. Madam Clerk, would you please read the public hearing item we're considering tonight. Yes, sir. Public hearing with respect to the adoption of a proposed resolution authorizing the conveyance of a private drainage easement encumbering tax parcel 3435 in the Holly Neck, excuse me, Holy Neck Borough of Suffolk to Suffolk Benton LLC or its assigns for the benefit of tax parcel 3456, excuse me, 66. Thank you, ma'am. Is the applicant present? If you would come forward, sir, state your name and address, you will have 10 minutes. Thank you, Mayor Glover. Uh, members of council, my name is Tyler Rose. I'm an attorney with the law firm Williams Mullen. <coughs> Uh, my business address is 999 Waterside Drive, Suite 1700, uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Um, here uh, tonight on behalf of Suffolk Benton LLC. Um, Suffolk Benton LLC is seeking a small private drainage easement as part of its development of a distribution center in the city of Suffolk, um, adjacent to property owned by the city of Portsmouth. The drainage easement will be approximately 19,560 square feet or 45 hundredths of an acre. Uh, it will be located on approximately 21.9 acre parcel owned by the city of Portsmouth. Um, that is a part of but separate from the greater 900 acre Lake Kilby um, uh, Suffolk golf course parcel. 
Um, we were offering $5,000 for the easement uh, to ensure that the city is fully compensated. Uh, the easement was appraised at $1,078. Uh, um, as noted in the uh, city manager's report, that was, I believe, part of the packet, the Department of Utilities has reviewed the easement request and determined that the easement would not have a negative impact on the city's watershed. Uh, we have here tonight with us uh, our engineers with Kimley Horn, who has worked closely with the city's utility department to confirm that the requested easement is compatible with the city's interests. Um, Kimley Horn is here tonight to answer any uh, specific technical questions that you may have with regard to the easement. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank city staff for being so responsive um, and helping to facilitate this request. Um, and wanted to thank you all tonight for your time and consideration. Um, and I, I will stand by for any questions that you all may have. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions from my colleagues on council? Dr. Yes, Whitaker, sir, you have the floor. Uh, I'm not sure if this is for the city manager or city attorney, but the purchase uh, amount, is that consistent with past purchases? Madam City Attorney. Yes, this is, a, uh, this is consistent with past purchases, mm -hmm. yes. Are there any additional questions or comments from my colleagues on council? Seeing none then, sir, um, you can have your seat. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Uh, you, do, you are not required to have signed up if you wish to come forward to speak on this particular matter. We ask that you come forward, state your name and address, and you will have five minutes. We do have one speaker. His name is David France. Mr. France? You're good, sir? Okay, thank you. Seeing no other speakers, then this public hearing is now closed. Are there any additional comments from my colleagues on council? Because this is a public hearing, um, it will be moved to our, it will be voted on during our city manager report under that item. So if it is okay with everyone, we can move forward with the agenda. We have now came, come to our city manager's report. Item 23-60. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting a law enforcement equipment and technology grant in the amount of $22,000 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 grants fund for the purchase of eligible equipment, technology, and software. Thank you, ma'am. Is there any additional question uh, from my colleagues on council? We're in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugel. Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillage. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 23-61. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we, ordinance pertaining to this item. Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting settlement funds in the amount of $22,272.32 from the National Opioid Abatement Trust II and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 Behavioral Health Care Service Fund for use by BHS for approved abatement purposes as defined by the Virginia Opioid Fund and Settlement Allocation MOU. Thank you, ma'am. We are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Any additional questions or comments from my colleagues on council? Seeing none, Madam <coughs> Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugel. Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillage. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 23-62. <coughs> Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting additional grant funds in the amount of $2,194 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services and appropriating said funds in the FY 2023 grant funds to provide funding to operate local probation and pretrial services in the city of Portsmouth. 
Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion in a second. Move for approval. Second. second. Any additional questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugo. Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillage. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 23-63. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we have pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance amending and reordaining section 7-32 of chapter 7 of the Code of the City of Portsmouth, Virginia, Buildings and Building Regulations, Division of Building and Inspection, for the purpose of conforming the education experience and certification requirements for serving as the local building official to the Virginia Code. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Any additional comments or questions? Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugel. Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillage. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 23-64. <laughs> and Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance amending and reordaining section 35-135 of chapter 35 of the Code of the City of Portsmouth, Virginia, taxation environmental restoration sites for the purpose of conforming the partial real estate tax exemption available for eligible environmental sites to the Virginia Code and the standard practices of the relevant state agencies. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Council members, we need a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. Any additional questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugo. Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillage. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. And Madam Clerk, we have now come to item 23-65. And would you please read the ordinance we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting funding from the Virginia Department of Social Services in the amount of $2,700 and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 Social Services Fund for the Family Partnership Meeting Incentive Program. Thank you, ma'am. We're in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Any additional question or comments? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugel. Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillage. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 23-66. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting with appreciation a donation in the amount of $100 from the Tidewater Baptist Women Ministry and Educational Convention and appropriating set funds to the FY 2023 Social Services Fund for use by the Department of Social Services to support foster children at Christmas. Thank you, ma'am. We need a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. Any additional questions or comments? Madam Clerk, would you please read the would you please call the roll? Yes. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Hugo? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Mr. Tillich? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 23-67. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting funding in the amount of sixty one hundred dollars from the Virginia Tourism Cooperative and appropriating the said amount in the F into the FY 2023 general fund budget for use by the Department of Museums. Thank you, ma'am. We're in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugel. Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillich. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 23-68. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting funding in the amount of $221,000 from the Portsmouth Museum's Foundation and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 Grants Fund for use by the Museum's Department for the expansion and upgrade of the Body Works exhibit at the Children's Museum of Virginia. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. 
Move, Move for adoption. Second. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugo. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillich. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glaver. Yes. Item 23-69. Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. Resolution authorizing the grant of a <coughs> private drainage easement to Suffolk Benton LLC and come bring approximately 4,500 of an acre of property owned by the city of Portsmouth at 1227 Holland Road in Suffolk. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. We are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugo. Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillage. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 23-70, and Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir, a resolution approving the City of Portsmouth's participation in the proposed settlement of opioid-related claims against Teva, Allegrin, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and their related corporate entities and directing the city manager or her designee to execute the documents necessary to effectuate the city's participation in the settlements. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. second. Is there any additional discussion or comments? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Hugo. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillich. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. <coughs> now we have come to item 23-71. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. A resolution forming a committee to plan and coordinate programs in support of the Virginia America 250th Commission. Thank you, ma'am. We are in need of a motion and a second. Move to adopt. Second. Any additional questions or comments? Sir, you have the floor. Yes, um, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm gonna be voting uh, no on this item and I just want to um, explain uh, so that persons are uh, informed. Uh, today, uh, February the 28th, is the last day that the nation celebrates uh, black history um, versus uh, blacks in history and Dr. Carter G. Woodson, uh, the founder of Black History Week, uh, Negro History Week, and then came Black History Month, uh, wrote a book called The Miseducation of the Negro, which was a book that was used in many university settings um, across the nation. And in reading this uh, information on the Virginia American 250 Commission, that was included in our packets. Uh, I find it very troubling, uh, particularly uh, as an African American. Uh, I find the write up very troubling. I asked the presenter um, last, at our last meeting, uh, it's interesting that the outline that is presented, it completely ignores uh, the issue of how uh, slavery was at the root of the American Revolution uh, versus what we were taught in school, taxation without representation. Uh, it's interesting that as you read the packet that was given to us that in no way does it take into account the fact that uh, the British were at that time abolishing slavery because they were losing control of those who were enslaved in the Caribbeans and they were moving them to the mainland. And it doesn't take into account the privatization of slavery that comes as a result of that on the colonies that increase the revenue, particularly in Virginia, because of the privatization of it. And I say that because what is going to happen here in this celebration is going to be a glorification and a romanticizing of something that was, for my people, a complete destruction of who they were, uh, their opportunities to strive. 
And I'm not going to be a part of funding a false narrative. Um, from what I've seen in this write-up, the committees at the local level have to conform with the state's guidelines. And the state guidelines that I read in here, it speaks of nothing about the Africans who were trying to escape, who were fighting with the British. And so it is a skewed perspective. And considering what the governor of this state is doing with critical race theory and also um, now examining um, African history courses and what we're seeing happening in Florida, um, money doesn't mean all that to me. And I'm not going to perpetuate what Dr. Carter G. Woodson spoke of. And until we can give a holistic perspective to this, and, and, and not just celebrate, but to take into account the suffering that many people, not just my ancestors, but Native Americans as well. Um, there's an interesting book for those that are listening, or young folks. Um, I encourage you to get this book. It's called The Counter-Revolution of 1776. It is by Dr. Gerald Horn. He is the Moore Professor of History uh, at the University of Houston. Uh, I encourage you to read that and get a truer perspective of what was really happening in the American Revolution of 1776. And as I say, for, for there not to be a true context of what slavery uh, did in this whole revolution, I think we'll be given a false narrative. And I'm not going to perpetuate that. And so I'm going to be voting against it. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, then Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. No. Mr. Hugo. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Tillich. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. No. Mayor Glover. Yes. That concludes our city manager's report. We have now moved to new business. Item 23-72, boards and commissions. Uh, Mr. Moody, do we have any boards and commissions to report? No, we don't, Mayor. None to announce tonight. Thank you, sir. We have now moved to item 23-73, items submitted by council. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. A resolution to amend the rules of order and procedure of the Portsmouth City Council for the purpose of regulating the use of cameras, video recorders, and other recording devices at city council meetings. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. We are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Is there any additional discussion on this matter? Um, do we, we had a second. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? A second. Um, Councilman Barnes, so you have the floor. Well, my first question is, um, who actually came up with this? Who were the four that came to the consensus of doing this? Um, sir, I think it was sent out to you via email. Not the consensus. It, it was a consensus. Sir. Who was it? I'm sir, asking who the who sir, the consensus sir. Was. It was listed in the email. I'm asking you who it was. Um, you don't need to ask me who it was. It was in the email. I can't remember who it is. I think the attorney sent the information out. So I think the appropriate question would be asked to the city attorney on, on, on who it was actually sent to. I don't have access to the email, but I, I did receive an email from um, uh, the clerk of the court noting that the mayor and three other, um, Councilman Moody, um, Count, Vice Mayor Lisa Lucas Burke and Councilman Hugel um, were the four folks who had the consensus to, to create this. And, and also, yes, myself. Right, and the mayor. Well, I figured it was you because when I first got on council, you, you said this to me. You was trying to get me to stop recording meetings. So I know this directed specifically for me. Um, with all that's going on in our city, especially with all the crimes that's going on, all of the murders. We have 14 in two months. How does this benefit and help stop all that? By not having a, a, a option, another option to inform the citizens of Portsmouth. I mean, I, I haven't heard any citizen say, 
um, we we have a problem with having a lot of options of seeing what's going on at a council meeting. So with that being said, I'm a, I'm going to be voting against it. I think that we should have plenty of options for our citizens to see what's going on at a council meeting. Also, we I know we shut off the Facebook for from the city to do council meetings as well. So it sounds like a another method to block the citizens from finding what's going on in the city. Certainly, sir, you are entitled to your opinion. The next speaker, Dr. Whitaker, sir, you have the floor. Yes, um, this is for the city attorney. Uh, you mentioned that there was an email that was sent. Yes, sir, there was an email directing uh, my office to draft the language uh, for this resolution. Okay, and that was sent by? Um, it, the, cler the clerk who uh, operates the mayor's office. I shouldn't say operates the mayor's office, but the city clerk who assists the mayor in sending his emails out. Okay, so the um, email that was sent through the clerk, it was the four persons in that email requesting a resolution. That's correct. Okay, and so was there any particular reason why you didn't share that with the entire council? I, I thought that you all had received that email. You did not receive it. Did you send it to the entire I, I, council? I believe I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, because um, I know I, I didn't receive. Um, I, I, I apologize didn't receive for that. If and you didn't and this, it. this is the uh, second meeting now where there has been a resolution produced that it did not come before council. And I just, I just want to say, okay, this, this is the second, this is the second one where um, council was not made aware or discussed the um, resolution or directed that there be a resolution that came from the city attorney's office. Uh, uh, well, let me, let me correct you on that. This was an email that was sent to my office with the consensus, which means it is, it is the act of council to draft this, this resolution. Right, but right. what I'm saying is this is the second one that has not come before the total council. It that's does come all. before council, sir. The packet is sent to you before the council meeting. No, that's that's after the fact. That's no. after the fact that the resolution um, had already been put on no, the sir. agenda. That resolution was not addressed until that consensus was sent, which was right. shortly before that's, that I, meeting. I agree to, with you on okay. that. I agree right. with you on that. I'm saying that it was not sent to the entire council before it was included in the packet. But that's what I'm saying, let, it's the second time. Let me just, let me just, I wanna be very clear. I, I, I am not here to hide anything from council. I have been above board and I, I take my job very seriously. No one's doubting that. Okay, and I always come here very prepared. And when this thing came before our office, we knew this was gonna be a political firestorm, which was, this is not a, a lost on us. So we worked very carefully to try and research and evaluate what was a appropriate under the mm -hmm. circumstances so that no rights, nobody's rights on this day or in this, um, in this forum would be violated. And so we worked very hard to change the language such that it would include the ability for anyone to record you simply cannot record from the dais. That's what this resolution, that was not how it was started. And that only happened because our office took the time to contact not only the Attorney General's office, but also FOIA Council. And we did that with a very short time frame, and we did that with an attempt to be fair to everyone. I even talked with Councilman, um, with Councilman um, Barnes in advance to discuss this with him and answer his questions, as well as Councilman Hugel, who had questions as well, and anyone else who had those questions. So it seems to me that you were implying that my office is somehow playing hide the ball, and I wanna be very clear that that is not the case. Well, the implication is that there have been emails that have been sent that the entire council was not privy to. If you're saying that the email was sent and that it was an oversight, I will, I will check that out. But I'm just saying I didn't receive anything until then, but there's no, questioning of your work ethic at all. That is not the issue. Also, the language of the, um, the language here, it says cameras, video recorders, and other recording devices may not be used any closer to the dais than the speaker's podium, okay? So what, 
perspective is that? that that's because not the full. It, it's at the direction, uh, otherwise directed by Sergeant of Arms. So if no, the no, Sergeant what, of Arms. What I'm saying is it says here that it may not be used any closer to the dais than the speaker's podium. So my, my, question, my question becomes if, as the Sergeant of Arms is assessing that, from what orientation is that? Because it's vague here. It says between any closer uh, to the dais than the speaker's podium. So it's not talking about from here to the podium or from that back wall to the podium. What the, is, what the, is marker, the, the marker is the speaker's podium. Right. And so, so that is, so when it, the language is no closer than. So that right. means that is the closest point to the dais. From what orientation? From here to the podium or from that back wall to it, the It's podium? from the speaker's perspective. So it would be from the speaker back. From the speaker standing facing us backwards. Right. So they can't use it from the speaker podium backwards? Speaker podium forward. See, is that's where what I'm saying. See, yeah. see how confusing that is? Because you just yeah. said back, yeah. now it's forward. And I'm just saying the language there could be interpreted both ways. It's not clear. And if, if that's what you're trying to achieve, I'm just saying it needs to be a, a clear language there because well, that can be interpreted. Better. Right. What we did when we looked at this is we looked at other cities who had similar such um, directions. And every city directed theirs from the speaker's podium because it's really from the perspective of the public. The FOIA rules are really to protect the public to receive all as much information as they can. And so when we drafted this, uh, Councilman, we were anticipating it to be from the perspective from the perspective of the speaker. Right. And it's consistent with other <coughs> cities such as Norfolk, which designates the speaker's podium as the marker. Um, it also allows for the sergeant of arms to adjust that accordingly. So let's say, for example, it's, it blocks a view or is not appropriate for a speaker. It can, the sergeant of arms can direct that it be any other place in the, in the, um, in the body of the chamber. And so it allows for um, flexibility on the person who is charged with managing the safety of, and, and distractions in the, in the chamber. Yeah, and um, um, I'm, I'm glad you said that FOIA speaks to getting information mm -hmm. out. Uh, we just went, well, I know for myself, because the two-year renewal went through the four-year training, mm -hmm. it specifically says in there that these bodies should do all things possible Absolutely. as far as getting information out unless it causes a disturbance or interruption. Correct. Okay? Um, I have not seen any disturbance or interruption um, from what uh, Mr. Barnes is doing with using the camera up here at the school board meeting. School board members um, do it as well. I haven't seen any complaints coming before here. I think it's a very petty act um, to take out some type of disgruntlement. Um, but as far as what, what's being done, it's not interfering with any council meeting. I think it's also a class issue um, because of the fact that there are persons who go through uh, Mr. Barnes' Facebook, who uh, we know that um, Mr. Barnes uh, has had close relationships with his community. And I think, again, this council, just like it did with uh, the stipend, is um, doing things that are really class issues and are keeping certain classes out. And so I just want to uh, say that I know you all have the votes to do it, but it's petty. There has been no interference on this body uh, by what he's doing, and I think that it's a, a low point for us to deal with even an issue like this. Thank you, sir. And we do have a speaker. The speaker is Mr. Godaldig Yatrowski. Mayor, council, and other neighbors. Uh, I concur with Councilmember Whitaker's uh, analysis of the deficiencies in this resolution. As somebody who is a big believer in free flow of information, uh, I don't see where there is any public detriment to having members of council freelance their own videos or audio recordings of this meeting. 
Uh, like Councilmember Whitaker, I have not seen anything disruptive as a result of one member of council running his own video operation. I'm glad to see that there is a perimeter that does not impose this restriction on the citizens because I would say that you would have been inviting a suit if you had done that. Um, by the same token, council members are citizens and by virtue of their positioning in this chamber, you are putting them at a disadvantage relative to other citizens. I, I just don't see where the public good is being served by this resolution. And I'd like to say procedurally, I have long objected to items popping up in this particular section of the agenda without due notice to the citizens. At least the manner in which this item was presented did not deprive us of a warning that it was coming. So I thank the city attorney for her role in ensuring that we at least had a week's notice that it was coming. But I would have liked to have known whose proposal this was. Just as when the city manager makes proposals for the agenda, we get a statement of purpose and need. There's no such statement in this. There's no statement of sponsor. On city manager report items, there is a sponsor, a department or a department head or the city manager herself. So there should be some pride of authorship in this. <clears throat> Let me also say that I'm uh, unhappy with what passes for consensus. The original definition of consensus meant unanimous consent. Uh, I believe that it has been degraded to where now a majority suffices for consensus. That really wasn't the intent. You are effectively voting without voting. So you're doing an end run around citizen participation in many instances by calling for consensus usually under the noses of the citizens who by your rules of order and procedure and by rules of common decency can't cry out and say, wait a minute, you're trying to put something through without it ever coming before the citizens for our point of view. We don't do it, but there's this little voice in my head that does a heck of a lot of shouting when you all are meeting in the other room or meeting in work session here. So for all these reasons, I would ask you to withdraw this item. I don't believe it's needed. I don't believe that it improves the flow of information to the citizenry. And I don't believe that there's any public harm from it. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Godowski, you, sir. Mr. Godowski, you come back to the podium, please. I just have a question because you attend the council meetings uh, regularly. And you attending the council meetings, has that camera caused any disturbance in this chamber? Not that I have noticed, sir. Yeah, not, I don't think anybody could say that it has. But what's happening here, the reason why those issues you have is because you're seeing personal vendettas being taken out and they're trying to couch it in terms of decorum, which I would say if any of the other council members were doing what Mr. Barnes is doing, it would not even be an issue. But that's the pettiness that it has decreased to. And so I just, I just want to share that it has nothing to do with decorum. It's simply 
retribution against a council member that some have a problem with. And I commend him because I know there are persons that watch our council meetings through his Facebook because it's easily accessible. That's why I say it's a class issue that's going on as well. And so uh, I appreciate your comments, but what you're saying is, is on point. And I think that anyone who is really conscious and is truthful will see that this is nothing but a personal issue. Mayor, may I say one more thing? Yes, you may, sir. Thank you. I believe over and above any personal animus, this is a generational divide. This generation of which Mr. Barnes is a member is very social media oriented. And we older folks need to accept that the world has changed. Thank you. Uh, and I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you, sir. And it's, and it's not an issue. It's interesting. This isn't an issue at school board meetings where school board members are doing the same thing. It hasn't caused a disturbance. And it's not, it's not so much just the social generation. What you see happening here amongst the ones who are about to vote on this, it's a personal issue. Thank you, sir. Councilman Barnes, sir, you have the floor. I think also speaking to something that was said earlier, in the past when a consensus to put something on the agenda was done, it was sent in an email and the consensus was done through email amongst all seven council members, whether they said no or whether they said yes. Um, it was two things that was added to the agenda, this meeting and the last meeting that we did, I didn't even know about until the agenda actually came out. It didn't come to the full council asking if we were in support of it. It just basically talks amongst themselves and then we look at the agenda, it was on the agenda. Um, also, to the, the, the city attorney, you said it didn't start this way. What does that mean? Oh, okay, two things. I want to speak to two things that he said. First of all, it is not the city's attorney's responsibility to, to send that consensus around. That is amongst the colleagues, so I don't want you all to be confused Correct. that this is something that is coming out of the city's attorney's office. We are directed by council, and we act accordingly. Secondly, what I wanted to say was, when this was first presented to us, it's usually always presented in a raw form. Uh, they suggest certain language or they have certain ideas about, when I say they, council members have certain ideas about what they are, are proposing something to be. <coughs> it's, it's no different than any department head. We, you know, we, we service the entire city, all 1,600 employees, all department heads, city council, everyone. So when we get these things, we don't just rubber stamp them. We have to review them for legality and form. Not policy, not appropriateness, that is the duty of counsel to my right. Our office looks at it for legality and form. So when we received it, we evaluated it to determine if it was in legal form and if it was appropriate. Not policy-wise, but whether it was something that if we were to put it out would result in us being sued immediately. Now, we can't stop anybody from suing the city. You can bring a suit for anything. Someone can bring a suit for this very um, piece of uh, resolution. But what I will say to you is it was thoroughly researched. I and my staff not only looked at the language, we researched every FOIA case we looked at, and I'm not saying this for support or against it. What I am saying is that when we piece these things together, it is important that they are in true legal form to protect the city as best we can. That's all I'm saying. So when I was saying it started out differently, the language was very different than what you ultimately see here on the resolution. What was Thank the original you. language? Um, it, it essentially was a consensus of council. They wanted to be able to vote on whether or not an item was uh, disruptive or distracting on the dais by a consensus of council, which would have resulted in a more random approach depending on who, what the consensus would be, and that has been upheld by FOIA as being um, um, in violation. And so we, we tried to make it match more of a broader approach that would not um, result in it being uh, based on a consensus. Does, um does FOIA say that a council member shouldn't record a meeting for the public? FOIA prohibits any restriction on videoing um, by the public, period. 
Thank you. But it does allow for the management of how that videoing is done. So we can, we can the council can legislate where and how, but it cannot restrict um, recording as a whole. Vice Mayor Lucas Burke, ma'am, you have the floor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Um, when this was brought before me, the information, um, my first concern was, is this a violation of uh, the members' rights? That's what we wanted, I wanted to know, because if it was a violation of their rights, then that was a concern uh, for me. And once I found out um, that the way that we presented it with this, the member would be allowed to uh, to record, um, to have their device, just not on the dais, uh, then that, that answered the question for me. Um, this, th this game, folks, it, it is a, a, a professional business office setting. Now, whether it is young generation, class generation, you don't get to go to the state of the Senate in the legislature with a, a, a phone at your desk. I mean, it's just the way that you handle uh, business in certain situations. These gentlemen are here with ties and suits. It's because this is how we conduct business in a municipal government. We don't come in here with ball caps and, and sweatpants and hoodies. It's a professional way that we conduct business and you're allowed to, if you're allowed to record and if it's at the podium stadium, uh, at the podium stand, then, then you are allowed to do it. Uh, we as a council can determine how uh, we proceed as a municipal government. And if other governments in our region are doing the same, then we can decide if we want to conform to that manner. Um, now, with the, the consensus, um, it was never a question before when consensus, there was a lot of things that came up on the agenda that I didn't know anything about until it came up on the agenda. Um, and it's not a tit for tat, we're not gonna do what you do in day, and, and, and pay back or, or whatever. However it comes, if three or more people decide they want to put it on the agenda, then we can do that. If three or more people decide they wanna have a closed session, then we can do that. And how you arrive at it is how whoever decides that it's gonna go down. So it's not a matter of I didn't see it, they didn't see it, because there was a lot of things that I didn't see in 2021 and 2022 that came up on the agenda. Councilman Hugo, sir, you have the floor, and then we're gonna take the vote because I think we spent enough time on this particular matter. Sir, you have the floor. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I don't wanna drag this on, but I wanna drag this on just for two more questions. First, to the city attorney. Madam City Attorney, you and I discussed this. For the record, the language that you have built into this resolution is it your opinion that we don't infringe on First Amendment rights or FOIA? Um, like I discussed with you, I think that this is the best um, this is the best production of language that allows for recording of an entirety of the of the um, of the session. I did also caution you that there is it is unclear when that right is of a council member who does not readily have access to the recording device because his location is not in the body of the chamber but at the dais. That is an unknown area. Um, that was noted to us by the FOIA council and so there is some gray area that's unclear. Um, and so that's the answer to that question. Okay, thank you. The other question is for the city manager who isn't here right now, so I'll, I'll address it to you, Mr. Mayor. So to Councilman Barnes' earlier point, we were feeding Facebook Live from the city feed, and that's been stopped without any discussion really amongst us. And I uh, have heard a fair amount of feedback and unhappiness uh, that we killed the Facebook feed live from the city. Uh, I'd like to go back and revisit restoring that Facebook uh, live feed from the city feed. Uh, we, we got opportunities to get the message out there and uh, at least the, the, with the city feed, we know that's gonna come from, from the, the folks uh, delivering the, uh, the, the camera work and whatnot from, from the city staff. So, so I'd like to uh, investigate getting the Facebook live feed restored. Thank you, sir. And as you can see, the city manager has stepped away for a moment. Yeah. But, but certainly, I think that is in order. And when she gets back, we will ask her to look into uh, perhaps what it would take to reinstate something. 
Thank you very much. And with that, uh, Madam Clerk, do we have a motion in a second? We do. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barnes? No. Mr. Hugel? Aye. Mrs. Lucasburg? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Mr. Tillage? No. Dr. Whitaker? No. Mary Glover? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Are there any additional items submitted by council? Dr. Whitaker, you have the floor, sir. Uh, yes, this item pertains and the city manager isn't here, so uh, I'll wait till she comes back because it pertains to a report back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mayor. Mayor. Yeah. Vice Mayor Lucas Burke, ma'am, you have the floor. Yes, um, I, I guess I have uh, the the proposal that I want to bring before the council uh, for a report back um, re is in reference to some of the code amendments that our planning commission um, is proposing. I attended the um, amendment meeting that the planning commission held last Wednesday here in this chamber. And one of the things that was brought to my attention by some of the developers is that the site plan uh, term is not in alignment with the use <coughs> permit terms. Um, we have seen where developers oftentimes come back uh, to us for either a renewal or an extension of their time on their use permit because it's not enough time to get the, the project going, it's not enough time to get finance, and it's not a time, enough time to get the materials to begin the project or to get the foundation. Um, so I guess what I'm requesting is if we can have um, planning or whoever needs to look into uh, the matter um, to see if this council can align our use permit time span, which is two years, which is not enough time for developers to get everything done they need to do in order to begin with the site plan. And um, I did attend the Economic Development Alliance um, in Virginia Beach with um, Doug Smith and other uh, local um, cities last week. And I did ask the question because the developers are bringing this to me. And um, a lot of the cities have their site plan time frame, which is usually four to five years, aligned with the use permit time frame. So instead of us having to delay uh, developers to come back and to ask for a renewal or to ask for an extension, could we just get some more information or some, some more uh, data on um, if it's in, um, an issue? Because I know that some of the developers came back to us during the pandemic, and I know that you know things were delayed during that time frame, so I don't want to you know, make it an issue where we're looking at something that may not really be an issue, but I think other cities have their site plans aligned with their use permit. So that's um, the report back um, that I would like to get. And if that's in uh, fact uh, true information that would help our developers, because we, we're here to do business, um, we open uh, for business and we want to, to be able to help uh, bring new projects to our city. Um, so if that's in fact uh, comes back with information that we could use, I would like to be uh, it to be considered as one of the code amendments as well. Councilman Moody, sir, you have the floor. To, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, to the Vice Mayor's point, um, I would think that these changes, the people is going to affect are the developers. Uh, what, what is the process to uh, solicit feedback uh, from them? Or have we gotten any feedback thus far other than uh, uh, I'm sure each of us have probably gotten some calls. Uh, is, is there uh, a process? Have we sent this out uh, uh, via, uh, you know, trade trade publications? Uh, have we advertised it so developers can see what changes? But, and the reason why I ask that, uh, the people that's going to be affected by it are the people that, w that we want to invest in our city. So if, if it's out in left field and it's going to hinder development and, and delay the process, or in this case have something that's out, out of alignment 
uh, uh, we, we need to know that before we finalize it. So, so my, my question is to staff, uh, what, how are we going to receive that information? Is there, is there a set process? I guess that answer is, is probably no. <laughs> I'm not sure, um, Councilman Moody, I'm not sure that the question um, was clear and I understand where you're going and what you're asking, but perhaps it sounds like you were asking the question of the manager and the staff to get I, back some I, information. I, I said I was asking the staff. Right, right. And so I just yeah. want to make sure that that yeah. that, that, that yeah. not a manager and, and, and maybe they can maybe they can get back with us uh, on how to uh, solicit that input uh, so we can have a process. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Councilman Hugo, did you have your hand up? Uh, well, as the liaison to the Planning Commission, uh, just feedback to Councilman Moody, uh, the Planning Commission did agree to host a workshop which was held the 22nd of February. In anticipation of that, uh, the word was spread as best it could be to developers, builders, land use lawyers, folks that typically bring zoning and permit, use permit uh, issues uh, to the Planning Commission and then to us. Uh, it was 27 pages of zoning changes to be reviewed. And, and so it was a pretty robust discussion. Uh, and there were inputs provided during that workshop for, for tweaks to the, to the zoning changes that the, that the planning department had proposed. Uh, the head of planning suggested at the end, and actually there was a conversation that with 27 pages, it was probably too much for all of that to come to city council at once and for us to digest all in you know, one up or down vote. And so there was discussion uh, about taking that 27 pages and, and uh, separating it into to smaller bite-sized pieces that could then be uh, uh, adjusted with the tweaks that were proposed and, and then bring those uh, through the Planning Commission back to City Council for, for uh, eventual approval. So that was the, the process that's been used so far. Thank you, Councilman Hugo. And I know that um, we have Mr. Wright here who is our engineer, and I know the manager wanted to say something to that effect, so. Mr. Wright, may I ask you to speak to please speak to it because I think it's two separate things and I don't want anybody to get confused. Yes, ma'am. Um, good evening, City Council. Um, to the Vice Mayor's question about the use permit and site plan terms, um, the use permit, the term of that is to get your site plan approved. Um, the site plan term is once your site plan is approved, you have um, basically five years to start your project. Um, so they're, they're not necessarily the same. People were coming back to city council, um, pandemic reasons, they weren't able to get through the process, they were having issues with different things, and that's not quite the same as the, the site plan term. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, I, I, so I, I think to the vice mayor's point, the, the feedback from our developers is you got five years to uh, to uh, use your uh, basically five-year window to use your site plan, but only two-year window uh, for the use permit. And so, given everything <coughs> that the developers have to do from the time they get the use permit to get through the design and and uh, permitting process to get the site plan approval, that two years is uh, too short a time period for them to do what needs to be done. And so the recommendation from their perspective is to extend that time so that they don't have to come back through the use permit process unnecessarily uh, when, if they've, they've been through it the first time. And so rather than having a two-year window for a use permit, uh, I think her point, and I agree with it, we, we ought to take a look at extending that use permit window from two years to, to, 
to uh, five years to be consistent with with the the time frame that we have in place for site site plans. Correct. Uh, Mr. Wright, could you just quickly? <laughs> yeah, so you, you run the risk um, with extending the use permit of, we have ever-changing regulations, so you run the risk of um, them having issues um, with submitting something to city council and then getting into the site plan process and still having to come back to city council because the regulations have changed again once you extend past the two years. Okay, but that gets captured in the site plan approval process, right? You know, once the site plan approved, you're, you're locked I don't in. Know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about after they have a use permit and while they're, they're doing their site plan preparation, if something changes, you all catch it during the site plan preparation and approval process. Yes? Um, once you start reviewing a plan, um, the regulations at the point you start reviewing the plan um, are the ones that you're um, reviewing the plan in accordance with. So if they change while the plan's being reviewed, you don't jump to the new regulations. Let's take a look at this, please. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll have to look at it more in depth as a, as a group and let the city manager and her team put together uh, the, the scope of the work and then, then we'll move forward. Thank you. Are there any other items to be submitted by my colleagues yes. on council? Yes. Dr. Whitaker, you have the floor, Just, sir. Uh, two items. Well, one is for the uh, city attorney, and um, it's probably a report back issue, and it deals with um, the issue of the sergeant at arms um, to make sure operating within uh, the charter. The, the sergeant at arms, um, they're here as employees of the city, or are they here off duty? I do not know that off the top of my head. I'll okay. research that and report back to you. Because, because if they're here. Oh, if, the, the chief is here. Maybe the chief could speak to well, them. Oh, if you're well, I'm just throwing it out yeah, there. Right. I'm throwing out. If, if, they're here, if they're here while on duty, then they're under the city manager's authority. They're not under council's authority. If they're here working as police officers, they work for the city manager. And so... Our charter says that we cannot interfere with persons who are subordinate. So, and, and I'm not trying to get around having a sergeant at arms. I'm just saying if we're going to do it, it needs to be done within the authority of the charter. And I just want, I guess just I'm want you to check that out. Yes, sir. Could I, I just want to understand what the issue is that I'm researching. Well, if, he, if he is, if the sergeant of arms is an employee, then then can council members sure. direct a city employee? In because, what in what ways? Well, in the in the sergeant at arms, you know, the the mayor can ask for the sergeant at arms okay. to remove I council understand. persons. Yes, sir. And so I'm not trying to say that can't be done. I'm just saying if it's going to be done, it should be done within the confines of the charter. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to say that it, it can't be done. Okay. Yes, the, the, second, the second issue is the report back uh, from the um, interim city manager uh, regarding the audit. And um, my question is that the information that you sent back, it shows that council uh, voted on December the 13th um, to set aside $300,000. Um, to be used to conduct a forensic audit of American Rescue Plan Act expenditures and the general fund budget, including procurement processes and procedures, and perform an assessment of public utilities billing. And so those were the areas that were outlined. And so the question is, where are we with this being done? Um, thank you, Council. So my, in my report back, I identified there is a couple of things. One with the, I, I didn't bring the ordinance with me because the ordinance did state that it was something to my discretion. Okay. I didn't, I didn't bring the ordinance with me because I did send all of that to 
council. But as far as the audit, are you asking one specific thing or across the board for the ordinance? Well, the ordinance clearly spells out the areas of the audit that were directed. And so I'm asking, where are we with the uh, forensic audit of the American Rescue Plan Act expenditures? Where are we with the general fund budget, including procurement processes and procedures, and the assessment of public utilities billing? Um, the ordinance specified that, however, the scope of work that was identified in the request to the um, consultant only addressed uh, ARPA gift cards. There is something on with the audit that addresses to my discretion, and unfortunately, I did not bring it with me to be able to identify that line item within that ordinance. I think you're referring to line item four, where it says that the city manager is authorized to take such actions as are necessary or desirable to contract for and cause completion of the audit contemplated by this ordinance. That's the only language in there that deals in, and it says contemplated by this ordinance. So council in this ordinance laid out the areas that were to be part of the forensic audit. The um, issue that you just raised as far as the scope of work only pertaining to the gift cards, um, you, also sent us, you also sent us a copy of what looks to be a um, preliminary discussion from the Hyder Consulting Group that what you are speaking to, um, it talks about the audit of the gift cards. Correct. Right. And so what, what the public isn't seeing and those sitting out here in front of us aren't seeing is that they don't have the exact documents that we see. And when in your email to us, when you say that the scope of work, your email, you said the uh, proposed scope of work dated December 7, 2022, documented by consulting group only identified ARPA gift cards. Um, <clears throat> when, when you make a statement like that and the public does not have privy to the documents that we see, that's not what it says in here. So let me read the scope of work that was provided by HCG, which was a proposal that the previous city manager submitted and requested for an agreement. And along so that the public is very clear, what I provided was what council asked me for. They asked me for a report back on the forensic audit. So here we have the group that I actually, we actually, well, the previous city manager uh, looked at. It says, conduct investigation into allegations of mismanagement. The facts and circumstances associated with acquisition of gift cards under auspicious of a financial relief program will be examined. The goal of which is to ascertain whether the program endured mismanagement to the city's detriment. We will Evaluate the process, including acquiring and securing physical electronic cards, the manner of determining eligibility for participation, accounting for funds distributed, distributed, and other relevant information. We estimate that more than 14,000 cards were acquired and distributed, and well, 14,000 cards were acquired and were acquired will require an accounting. We anticipate applying these procedures to make the determination. Extraction of um, identified data, confirmation of data set, preparation, analysis of information provided, corroborated and identified for follow-up, conduct necessary follow-up, including staff interviews, evaluate results of analysis, and revisit and follow up as needed. So those, that was the actual scope of work. It did not identify any of the things that council put in a ordinance dated December 13th, 2022. The question continued to come from council member to me to ask me, we're doing a forensic audit, where's the status? What are you, where are you in the process? Well, the process has not changed because the scope of work was never truly given to any uh, consultant firm prior 
to me coming here to determine those things that are now identified in the uh, ordinance. So what we have here is where we were nowhere as of December 30th. Nothing was provided, nothing was done. There was no, this also, I have a few emails that also suggest that no dollar amount nor an agreement was fully agreed upon. Now, if it's council's desire for me to move forward and create a brand new situation when I've clearly provided information that shows the alleged gift cards were not removed, nothing was done. I know we continue to try to make this a process issue. We continue to f find a hope or create some things that may be an issue, but there are none. And I've said that over and over again. What I am asking council to do now is to consider that ordinance since we're up and not waste the taxpayers' dollars, allow me to do my job, allow me to focus on the things that will help move the city forward, allow me to not have to look back for something that was not an issue or an allegation, a true allegation to start with. So what I am asking council for a consensus tonight is because there is the discretion for me to move forward or stop based on that ordinance to allow this to just stop so we can move forward with the real business of the city. All right. Mr. Mayor. Please. The, you know, there's a conflict. It's a, there's a conflict there um, for that request because of the nature of what has been contained. So that that's that the, the the document that the public doesn't have before them, which is foyable and can be read. Um, and the reason I was asking about the scope of work is because the document does not say, and this is from the Hyder Consulting Group making their proposal. It doesn't say uh, scope of work. It says preliminary work scope. And so if it's preliminary, it's not final or conclusive. Also, the again, the ordinance does not just deal with gift cards, nor does this audit just deal with gift cards. I don't know why um, you keep one of just focusing on the gift cards when it brought up other issues which have been documented and discrepancies. And so the emails that you have are really irrelevant because the ordinance has already given direction. Um, my other question is to the uh, city attorney, and that is this Hyder Consulting Group, do you know of them or were you involved with any of the previous interactions with this company? No, I wasn't involved. I, I was consulted with by the prior city manager as, as city managers would do when right. they were looking for um, what's appropriate in terms of legal advice. Okay. So I'm familiar with the name. Okay. Um, when she was initially looking for other options outside of Davenport Group, which is an uh, agency that currently handles our auditing, uh, I had, or they don't handle auditing, okay. Well, currently handles our financial advising. Um, the uh, Cheryl Hyder group is a group that I was familiar with in Northern Virginia. Right. She do, they do forensic accounting and there was some question about what exactly forensic accounting is and how that applied. And so that was one of many names that I had given to the group um, who was questioning some of these issues uh, so you, at the time. You, um, you recommended the Hyder group because of your familiarity with them in the past? Yep, that was one of a few names that I had given her from my prior work before coming here. So you, um, you were recommending, you were making these recommendations in the context of this um, ordinance that had been passed? I think the ordinance came after the recommendations. This was still very early on when we were okay. talking about what the differences are between the audits. Okay, all right. And um, as far as the amount that has been put out that the amount of this audit was to be $300,000 for the gift cards. Okay. Um, that's not what this document says. This, this document says it was between thirty-five dollars to 50000 Okay. So it was, just an, it was just a part of the overall $300,000 request. Not, 
not the total 300,000 for the gift card. So again, um, the ordinance specifically speaks not to just to gift cards, but it speaks to ARPA funding, the general fund, and also the public utilities. And I don't know why that would not be carried forward um, when there were legitimate issues that were raised. Thank you, sir. And right now I would like to call for a consensus of council. We have heard enough on this matter. We have gotten all the information and I am recommending the consensus to move forward from this item and continue with our agenda. We have a number of citizens who have signed up to speak. When you so say move I forward, can, are you saying move? Move uh, forward into this matter is closed. We are, I'm asking for an, an, a consensus to close this matter. But where are we forward. on the ordinance? That's what I'm trying to. Sir, sir, this matter in no terms ordinance. of an audit is closed. I'm asking for a consensus to close the agenda item on the matter of a matter of an audit. If I could so, get a so consensus. So are you going to rescind the ordinance? Is that what you are? Sir, I'm not rescinding any ordinance. What I'm oh. talking about, we're not discussing the ordinance. What we are discussing, sir, is the fact of the information that was provided to all of us, which was a report back. That's what we're discussing, Oh, no, sir. I was just trying to get okay, clear. Well, are you, when you said we're moving forward, are you saying the ordinance is still in place? What we, are, what we are moving forward with, sir, is we are making clear after we take this consensus that this matter as it relates to the report back and the information that was provided to all of us is a closed matter. So where are we with the forensic audit? I, Sir, that's we, 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 there is no forensic audit to my understanding. Can I get a consensus on council well, of I, moving? I got a question for the city attorney. We need to hear from you. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I have the floor right now, and I've called for a consensus with my colleagues on council to move forward from this item. I can't ask my question. I've already called for, I'm, I've, I'm calling for a consensus. I don't understand what you're trying to cover sir, up. Sir, excuse that's, that's me. That's what I don't understand. There's, what are you trying no to cover up? up? I mean, so why is it that the, the, the ordinance is. Sir, sir, here, here's, here, here's the clarity on that. We've already had that discussion. And all we're going to do is, all we're going to do is then, Madam City Attorney, if, if the issue of the ordinance is what the holdup is, can we as a council rescind the ordinance yes. at this time? Yeah. Let's do that then. I'm calling for, I'm calling for, do we call for a voter or how do we do that? You can't just, you can't just. We can vote, we can vote, it's a vote. It's a vote. You can add to the agenda. Yeah. You confused because you're trying to cover it up. No, that's why you no, confused because you're, no, <laughs> you <confused> <laughs> you're trying to cover it up. That's why you confused. You confused because you're trying to cover it up. That's exactly what your confusion sir, is. Sir, you're Look, out it's of order. It's Thursday. You're trying to cover sir, it up. Sir, you're out you're of order. You're trying to cover it up. That's please, all it is. Please, sir, would you would you respect me like I respect I'm respecting you? When you, talk? you. I'm respecting you're you. You're out of order, sir. I'm respecting you. You're out of order, sir. I'm respecting you. Okay, let's let's you're trying let's to cover proceed. It up. So what we're gonna what's What's, and your what's colleagues gonna, are what's too. What we're going to proceed to do? I need a motion to add the agenda item to 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 our agenda in order for us to proceed. Do we have a motion and a second to add the agenda item to rescind the ordinance? So moved. Second. second. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yeah. No. Mr. Hugel? No. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Mr. Tillich? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Um, point of order, the mayor said to rescind the agenda item. To rescind the it's, ordinance. It, it doesn't even, yes, see, I'm yes. saying you're trying to cover it up so no, we can't even put Sir? the motion in place. Sir, you have out of order and the point of order is not recognized. Can we continue on with the vote, please? I think you, I was you, the last you stated one. The, you stated the most no, correctly. No, ma'am. No. You did. Well, Council members. Ma'am, ma can we, ma'am, listen. I'm trying to clarify, okay. sir, Go if ahead. you give me a second. Okay, thank you. Council members, what we're doing right now is just adding an item to the agenda. Right. That's, that's all doing. that's happening with this. This is not actually voting on what the actual motion right. is. I'm just saying that's what he said. I understand, okay. sir. Okay, all right. You know, and I apologize. Hold on, ma'am, and, and go ahead and finish. But I apologize. Sometimes, you know, the words don't always come out. So, ma'am, you have the floor. Yeah. Go Dr. Ahead, Whitaker. No. Mayor Glover. Adding the item to the agenda. Yes. Okay. The item has 
you have the ability to add an item to the agenda. Yes. So the item that we, we have discussed to add to the agenda is to rescind the ordinance for the audit. Do you happen to know that ordinance? So we can be clear on what that item is. That's what I'm looking for. Council members, what I'm looking at right now is the actual ordinance number so that we can be clear on exactly what we're doing. And I have that ordinance. Oh, it doesn't have the number on it. <coughs> Council members, the way the ordinance reads is an ordinance authorizing the transfer of $300,000 from the non-departmental salaries category of the FY 2023 general fund budget to the contractual audit line item in the finance department category of the FY 2023 general fund budget for the purpose of conducting a forensic audit of ARPA expenditures and the general fund budget and an assessment of public utilities billing. So that would be what you would be rescinding. So it just won't the ARPA fund. That's what the ordinance says, sir. And Madam Clerk, do, um, thank you, Madam Clerk. Do we have a motion and a second? Move for approval. Second. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Mayor, are you going to call for questions? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, I will call for questions. Yeah. Do you have any questions or concerns? Councilman Moody, sir, you have the floor. Well, I think, I think the important thing here is that ordinance will cost taxpayers $300,000 for information and feedback that uh, Ms. Terry, interim city manager, has already provided this council. The problem is some of my colleagues don't want to accept her information. So consequently, if this ordinance is enacted, it's going to cost taxpayers three hundred thousand dollars to to chase down. Uh, he just revised it. Uh, it, it was said eighty thousand in gift cards. Now it's down to fifty thousand. Ms. Terry, uh, in, in her audit, said there are no missing gift cards. So uh, I'm a, I'm gonna vote to uh, rescind the uh, ordinance. Dr. Whitaker, you yes. have the floor. <laughs> Again, um, Mr. Moody. I was given misinformation. The three hundred thousand uh, was not just for the gift card audit. There were three items mentioned. It's interesting that the information you're saying that interim city manager uh, Terry has provided uh, it did only deal with gift cards. It didn't deal with the accountability. Also, it didn't deal with. I didn't get any information pertaining to the issue that was raised pertaining to public billing. Uh, public utilities. That issue was that there were persons who were not being billed in this city for water, and that was to be investigated, just like we saw that there was an organization that hadn't paid real estate taxes for 50 years. And so I haven't seen any information regarding those entities that aren't paying water bills in the city, where other people are paying water bills. I haven't seen that reported to the city. And I haven't seen any information on the general fund uh, reported. So you can state it. And it's interesting why you keep trying to limit it to gift cards. It's not just about the gift cards. It was about other areas, too. So if you can show me information or any council member about the discrepancy in businesses, persons who are not paying water bills and those who are, that information was not presented to us, and that, that's a discrepancy that was raised. And so I, I would like to see that information. Also, are uh, we going to allow for public speakers? Right. Yes. Yes, yes, we are. And, and, and if I, 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 I can handle that. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we are going to allow for public speakers, and we will open the floor at this time. Uh, anyone from the public who wishes to come and speak on this matter, you can come forward and you will have five minutes. State your name and address. Mayor, council, and other neighbors, 
Mark Gedilde Gitrovsky, 2713 Sterling Point Drive, Portsmouth, Virginia. So thank you, finally, for taking this up, because I have written to you and spoken to you about the necessity of proceeding in, in a lawful manner. And you cannot just ignore the actions taken by a previous council. So yes, I very much want you to vote on this. And yes, I very much want you to rescind it, as I said when you were considering the original item back in December. I believe that this is a stalking horse. This was an attempt to cast aspersions on a previous, previous city manager um, who was summarily fired. And I believe there was no consensus in the sense of universal consent nor universal notification when that action was taken. So I want to be consistent. I want everybody on council to communicate with everybody on council as well as with the public. I don't want little blocks doing their own little things but everything needs to be open and above board and visible to the public. So yes, please rescind that ordinance. Thank you. Or resolution. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, if you would come forward, state your name and address. You will have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council. My name is Sergio O'Neill. I reside at 1420 M Avenue in the city. You know, I, I, what, it, what this really is is a bunch of spinning. Y'all are wasting time. You, do you think somebody that's thinking about that has to bury their child wants to see y'all waste three hundred thousand dollars? We have two people who just died within the last week that have to plan funerals for their family members, and instead of some, somebody taking that three hundred thousand dollars and putting it towards technology or whatever the case might be to help prevent some of these shootings and killings and robbings and thefts from homes and all that kind of stuff. We, we're not but we're not going to put up with this crap. I promise you. We are not. We are tired of too, some of y'all wasting our time and our money and making us look like a dog on food. It does not make any sense. I, know, I, I mean, I'm just saying. Are you, do you have $200,000 to help pay for these funerals or put some technology out here? Do you have it? Because I'm quite sure your church got it going on, don't it? They, they make sure you, you fed. Tell them, come out here and help and come walk these streets to see what's going on out here. While you up there preaching that in the pulpit, preach, make sure they come and see what's going on. See, we're not going to do this where y'all want to play tit for tat and make yourself look good, especially at the last day of Black History Month, because I'm going to tell you straight up, some of us make us look worse than anybody else could have ever made us look. Ever. It does not make sense that as an African American, that we have to sit right here and our people fought, died to get equal rights, and yet some of us still turn around and do the same thing we blame some, some on somebody else. Tell me where that makes sense at. But, but like I said, like I said, we're not going to waste $300,000. That's just the bottom line. It's a waste of time and taxpayer dollars to do so. We need to put that $300,000 so we can start saving our kids' lives so they don't have to inherit further a city, a bunch of foolishness. You feel me where I'm coming from? Thank you. Thank you, sir. The floor is still open. If someone would like to come forward and speak, um, state your name and address, and you will have five minutes. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Elvira Johnson Williams. I live at 3313 Armstead Drive in North Truxton. Tonight, this is just stupid. This wagon wants to be heard and it's rattling real, real loud for nothing. Agreeing with Sergio, Sergio here, $300,000 to look for first, $80,000 to look for second, $40,000 to look for third, $50,000 that wasn't missing. 
So now here we come with something that was voted on back in December when we did not have a Mimi Terry anywhere in the building. My question to you all, why you didn't question your appointed city manager about this? Why didn't you follow up with your city manager about this $300,000? Why is it now, all of a sudden, you're interested in a forensic audit, which is totally unnecessary? Now, you worried about what the people think? This is what I think. I think you done lost your mind. That's what I think. You have wasted our time, your time, just so that you can be right. Now tell me about hiding. What you hiding, Mayor? Better yet, what you hiding, Mr. Whitaker? What you hiding, DeAndre? I'm now he has to have, you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sitting up here looking at this Facebook feed and they talking about how racist this black man is against his own people. Racism don't have a color no more. This council, and you know exactly who I'm talking to, you're going to get your point across if you got to beat that dead horse until he done turned to ashes, to dust, and back up and resurrect it all over again. Because you're going to be right in your mind. You're going to be right, but it's your mind. The people in Portsmouth is sick and tired of this unnecessary squabbling. I'm going to call pouring an order on all of you. That's what I'm going to do. Get it right or get out. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Seeing. You state your name and address, ma'am. You will have five minutes. My name is Melissa Williams, and I live in the 300 block of Carver Circle. Um, Dr. Whitaker, thank you for trying to provide transparency to the community. For those of us who actually are taxpaying citizens, I think that it is absolutely important for us to know what's going on and for people to be as transparent as possible, especially people who we voted for to be in the position that they're in right now. I personally think that. It's a whole lot of pick and choosing up here with y'all. Y'all pick and choose when y'all want to address something, depending on who it benefits or who it does not benefit. The information that you were trying to put out, uh, provide to us, I think is important that we absolutely know. We have been through three changes with this position, and a lot of us still don't even have a clue as to what's going on. And I know that a lot of people attack you a lot, but what I commend what you're doing because I think that what you're doing is the right thing in trying to provide transparency for the people who pay tax dollars in this city. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Sharon D. Anderson. I reside at 6005 Dunkirk Street in the city of Portsmouth in the section of Ebony Heights. I sat there for as long as I could because I'm seeing that some of the same behaviors from the last council occurring right now. The citizens are really sick and tired. Citizens want adults to lead. Now, when you're campaigning, you're, everyone talks about transparency. Everyone, that's the number one thing on your lit piece, is transparency. But it seems like after the election is over, you throw all that literature in the trash, and when you come up here, we have no transparency. So I think, number one, I've heard people are just sick and tired of every one of you up there. People want people that are actually going to lead. People that are going to be honest. People are people that are going to actually work for the citizens like they say they are going to do when they're campaigning. We're tired. Okay, everybody know I ran for city council in 2022. Everybody knows that because 
I wanted to come up here and do what's right for the sake of what's right for everybody. Not for this group, not for that group, not for this person or that person. People are tired. They're sick and tired and they want adults up there that's going to do the right thing just because it's the right thing to do. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any other speakers who wish to come forward? Seeing none, this is the speaking item is closed. And Madam Clerk, we are in need of a motion and a second. We have one, sir. You have a motion and a second? And could you read the could you could you read the caption again, please? About the, the, the rescinding caption. The ordinance reads, an ordinance authorizing the transfer of $300,000 from the non-departmental salaries category of the FY 2023 general fund budget to the contractual audit line item in the finance department category of the FY 2023 general fund budget for the purpose of conducting a forensic audit of ARPA expenditures and the general fund budget and an assessment of public utilities billing. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barnes? No. Mr. Hugel? Aye. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Mr. Tillage? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? No. Mayor Glover. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. We have now come to the next agenda item on our agenda, pending Mayor. items. Um, um, Councilman Tillage, sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I have two items. First, um, while serving on the school board, um, one thing that we received in all of our um, agenda packets was a financial, monthly financial statement um, of our school division. Um, we do not receive that on city council. And as part of the monthly agenda items that we vote on every month on school board, um, one of those is, a is the approval of a financial report. And so if we can begin to receive those as part of our agenda items, so that, and then also make it an agenda item so that every member of council um, is able to review all finances of the city, um, I think that would be very um, helpful especially when we're discussing finances. Um, we have a $767 million budget, and um, to, not have been, to not be provided that information, I think is a disservice to the members of council, especially when we, what, that's one of our biggest um, duties as a member of council is to vote on a budget um, annually. So we can begin to get those starting our next meeting. Um, I would greatly appreciate that, if it's the consensus of council. Well, one of the things I would recommend is, it, is that we get this looked into to see if we're able to do it, uh, to add it to our agenda in the way that, sh that, that you have recommended. I think it's, it's important for us if we are going to do something in that magnitude, we need to do it correctly. So if, if, if we would allow for the manager and her staff to come back with a report back on how we can do that. They, Right, but he was talking about adding it to the agenda. Well, that's, well, that's a council that's rule that we can, we, I mean, us as council, we, we can control how the agenda is created. Okay. And so I think that's an item that if we have the consensus on or to vote on as council, we can make that determination right now. If, if everyone else is fine with that, we can take the, the consensus vote on that uh, to move that forward. Um, what, what, what's the question? My question is, that we begin to receive monthly financial statements of the city um, regarding a financial report and that, that that be added to our agenda as an agenda item for us to accept or deny on a monthly basis. Now, let me ask a question while we're, we're having this discussion. Is that information online today? Yes, sir. Uh, we started posting financials online because it was brought up um, in January as something council wanted to uh, see. So I've um, started 
providing that online as well as uh, we're trying to do a distribution statement disbursements. In other words, every payment that goes out to a citizen or a business will be posted online. There are some things that need to be redacted because there's information that we're in HIPAA and some other things. However, any citizen will be able to go online and see any payment made to anybody that the city does business with. Uh, that actually we started last month, but we're going to go effective because of this meeting. We're going to um, provide the disbursements. Um, I can do it as of January. We're in February. And so when February is over, I'll do February and March. But you could go to the finance website now and see that information currently. Councilman Tillich, go ahead and then Councilman Moody. Yes, and, and I appreciate it being on the website for the viewing public and for the citizens of Portsmouth. But as a, us as city council members, our number, one, our number one priority is to approve an annual budget and to be good stewards of our dollars. And so I do believe that it's very advantageous of us to have a finance report on a monthly basis so that we know what the monthly burn rate is, so that we know how money is being dispersed and so that we're able to track. And to me, that would help to limit conversations moving forward in regards to there being needs for audits. Because we would understand as a member of council exactly where money is going. So I don't, I'm not doing this to make it, um, to try to expose anything. I'm doing this that is a, to be educated as a member of council so that we as the seven members can make a very good decision on what the budget's gonna look like moving forward. And I think that is very also helpful that as we're approaching budget season, we're able to see on a monthly basis where we may be able to reallocate money for next budget. And so I think that this is a really good practice that I said, like as I mentioned, the school board does. And unfortunately the school board, you know, they get a lot of bad publicity for not following a budget, but they do provide a monthly statement to their board members. And um, I don't know if council has ever done that, but from my understanding, it hasn't been a practice that council has done in a long time. Mr. Moody, so you have the floor. Well, um, I agree with that. Uh, I don't think it needs to be an agenda item. Uh, I, I don't see where that would, uh, the information can flow to council with uh, why would it be an agenda item to, uh, I, I can see where it would be a public work session item. Uh, that, and those have occurred, you usually, uh, CFO would give us a financial uh, briefing uh, that would be in the public work session and also uh, go out on the uh, city's uh, access channel as well or uh, YouTube now. But uh, yeah, I think we can get that information and I think we've gotten that uh, uh, in the past as well. So I think we just need to continue with it. So do we need to take a consensus on this? Dr. Whitaker, you have the floor. Uh, yes, just um, Councilman Tillich, just to be careful with um, saying that just because we see, we'll be able to see where money is going, there won't be need for audits. Um, just because you see where dollars are going and to whom they went, that does not necessarily address the policy that it was done according to policy. And, and that's what the crust of the issue that I was raising, that the forensic audit shows whether policy is being followed. So you know, just because this person received an amount, was it done according to policy and procedure? But I, I don't have any issue with that. Can we have a consensus? So, so, so our, our colleague has asked for a consensus to have a monthly report uh, submitted uh, to council uh, prior to uh, our meetings. Um, so, and um, do we also want to add it as an agenda item? I don't know that we need to have it as an agenda item. I mean, we can just have the monthly report submitted, but real quick, your question, Councilman Hugo. Yeah, I would just say it, it either ought to be on the work session agenda or on the council meeting agenda, but to get a, a monthly financial record in the record is, the, the, the way to do that is to put it in one, one of those agendas. 
and then make sure that it's available uh, for people to see. Yeah. I was saying work session. Yeah, work session. Okay, let's, let's let Councilman Moody, last question, and then we well, we'll take up the answer. Well, the reason why I say the work session, mm -hmm. that way we can have more discussion uh, in that type of format than a formal meeting. So uh, I think a public work session would be a better fit. And, and, and I, I'm not in disagreement with that. I think that is the appropriate venue. Dr. Whitaker, yeah, you have and, the floor. And so um, what would we be, if, if this presented, what would we be voting on? Just the fact that it was presented or do we agree with it? What well, would the vote actually be? Well, well, I don't know that we'll be voting on anything to my knowledge. Discussion. I guess it was just a discussion. What the councilman asked for was an opportunity to have that information provided, whether that be at a work session or on the agenda. Okay. Um, and then Mr. Moody indicated perhaps that we could have a more engaged discussion. We get the information be beforehand, which allows us to look into it. And I think that the work session is the most appropriate place to have that discussion. Okay. But that, that's just my thought. Okay. Are you okay with that, sir? Yes. Okay, so so can we just get a consensus that we will have that we will have the information monthly information submitted uh, to us before the upcoming work session, and once we receive that, we will then review that information at the work session and have the floor open for questions and and, and answers. Yes. Yes. Sir. All right. Can I see your show of hands once again? You get that, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any other items to be submitted by council? Moving right along, pending items. Ma'am, do you have any pending items? No, sir. Okay, then we've come to our non-agenda speakers item of the program. And Madam Clerk, would you read the speaker statement, please? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, city council rules require a limit of up to five minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice a timer. At the beginning of your five minutes, you will see a green light. Four minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of five minutes, you will see a red light, hear a beep, and we ask that you conclude your comments at that time. While speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern, all comments should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the forum and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. All remarks shall be directed to the city council as a body rather than any particular member of city council, staff, or the audience and should be limited to matters that only the Portsmouth City Council can influence. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of decorum will be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. Our first speaker this evening is Mr. Sergi O'Neill. Sir, if you would come forward and state your name and address. You will have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council. Um, citizens of Portsmouth, my name is Sergio Neal. I reside at 1420 M Avenue. Um, I, my, my topic of discussion tonight was uh, city leadership's interaction with the citizens. And let me just say this, I know it's a, it's a rule of the speaker part of the speaker statement that we do not we don't identify individual members of staff or council but I, I feel like that needs to change because we have to give credit where credit is due and I'm just gonna say it and y'all might kick me out but it is what it is I have to give credit to our um, city manager Miss Terry um, and the reason why I have to is because there are situations that occur in this city and I and I know me I ha I'm gonna speak for myself I have never seeing a city manager respond to a homicide, period. And none, none of them I have known. The homicide that took place on LaSalle Avenue is a block away from my house. I, I, when I left my house on driving down the street, Ms. Terry was standing down there with Chief Jenkins, trying to find out what, when, why, who all the questions as to what was going on down there. On a holiday at that. So she didn't take a day off. She didn't go fly out of the country. While everybody, a lot of people were at home chilling, she was trying to see what was going on. 
why is this particular house down here so hot? What is going on on this street that is turning it upside down day in and day out? So I'm gonna ask members of council, since we were trying to say what we do, you know, we, we stream that, you know, we stream a lot council meetings. Where were you at? What were you doing? Were you down there printing spot trying to see what was going on? Did you come from Cavalier Manor to come see what was going on? Because Cavalier Manor from Prentice Park is seven minutes flat on the highway. Ask me how I know, because I used to live on, on Durham Circle. Trust me, don't take long. So the next time we, we have resources that we can use, your pulpit, your camera, we need to address that. Bring your camera to Prentice Park. Bring your church to Prentice Park. Because I can tell you right now, other churches do. <laughs> other members of city leadership do. Not only with camera, they come down there with gloves, trash bags, Kleenex, the dry tears from people seeing people getting killed consistently. That's what, that's what they do. That's how they're in that. Oh, and then by the way, Friday, again, Miss Terry, group of citizens, get together, because she want to know what's going on in a setting where she pulls up after she had just got out of a meeting, just got finished giving information to somebody here, still made her business to show up and listen to what we had to say. And, and, and for, for lack of or whatever, you know, some of us, I know some of us grill her. I know one of us had a lot of questions for her. But guess what? She took it all in grace. Didn't bat her eye, didn't frown, didn't nothing. It is what it is. She know what comes with that territory. So whether some of y'all like it or not, for, for when she gets appointed, I'm not going to say if, when she gets appointed as the actual city manager, I know her work is going to continue. She's already made it known that she's about business. Because I can tell you right now, I guarantee you nobody on that block knew who she was. They probably thought she was just somebody just coming to be nosy. Didn't know her by her position, just knew that she was concerned about what was going on down there. But I can guarantee you right now, the next shooting that happened, somebody call my phone and see if you want to see. I will come pick you up to come see what's going on. Because I can almost guarantee something's brewing in Prentice Park right now. I'm just waiting on it to happen. So uh, I'm just saying, if, if we're going to talk about the interaction, we need more than just cameras and the pool pit to collect the offering. We need to see it in real time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Barnes, sir, you have the floor. Now, I agree with you. Um, I wasn't there at the, at the scene, but I was talking to his son, who plays on um, my, ba my AU basketball team, and I was consoling him because his dad was killed. Um, his name, well, I'm not going to say his name, but I was trying to be there for him because I know what his daddy meant to him, and I also know what his daddy meant to the rest of the players on the AAU team. Um, so a lot of these people that's, um, that you guys hear about on the news getting killed or whatever, a lot of them I did grow up with or was a part of something with them. I know a lot of people in the city, but I'm always there for people when they need it. But I don't have to show up for crime scenes to make it seem like it's important to me. I can do other things that you don't hear about, but showing up at the crime scene don't make you make it more important to you or less important. But I just wanted you to know, for that kid, I was being there for him. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker, Melissa Williams. Ms. Williams, ma'am, if you would come forward, state your name and address, you will have five minutes. area of Portsmouth. Um, I wanted to bring this up 
uh, last week, but for whatever reason, somebody failed to put my name on the non-agenda speakers list. I don't know how that happened, but I'm glad they fixed that problem this week. Um, and I know today is the last day of Black History Month, but doesn't stop me from celebrating Black History um, in just a month. I wanted to present to the uh, council the Black American Heritage flag. Um, I'm bringing it because I'm asking uh, for the sake of Black History Month and Juneteenth as well, if it could be recognized, um, just a little bit of history on the flag. Uh, the Black American Heritage flag was designed in 1967 by Melvin Charles and Gleason T. Jackson during the Civil Rights Movement in the United States of America. Uh, the flag represents the history, accomplishments, and pride of the Black American community in the United States of America, created as a way to make progress for the community. Uh, the purpose of the flag is to convey and represent pride in the history of black Americans. The Black American Heritage flag is a representation of the pain, remember from the degrading days of slavery to the undeniable contributions of black Americans um, to the United States. The elements of the flag include the color black to represent pride and pigmentation, Red to remind us of the rich blood black men and women have shared for freedom, equality, justice, and human dignity throughout the world. And the gold represents intellect, prosperity, and peace. Uh, for centuries, people from all over the world have waved flags of their homeland to display a sense of pride, where they come from, and from their uh, ethnic group. And being created in 1967, this, this flag is now embraced by black Americans uh, celebrating and honor honoring black America's culture. America is our homeland. America is where we come from. We are proud black Americans. And in honor of Black History Month, um, created by Carter G. Woodson, which started out as Negro History Week, I would like to introduce this flag to you and ask if it could be uh, recognized in celebration of everything that black Americans have con contributed to make the United States of America the superpower that it is and to display pride in our ethnic group as black Americans. This is the flag, if y'all are ne have y'all never seen it before. Uh, this is the book, The Rallying Point, that was written by uh, Dr. Melvin Charles and uh, T T Gleason T. Jackson. Uh, the flag has since now been rep re uh, recognized in states uh, like New Jersey, California, um, New, New Jersey, California, um, Kentucky, and I believe, uh, I think, I want to say Oklahoma, but I'm not sure, but it's been, it's, since then been recognized and uh, a student at Howard University um, also uh, did a display of it and um, it's since been recognized by uh, starting to get recognition through um, historically black colleges and universities. Thank, so thank you, Ms. Williams, it looks beautiful. Uh, Sergeant at Arms, could you please retrieve the flag uh, from Ms. Williams, please? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our next speaker is Mr. Leon Hammonds. Mr. Hammonds, sir, if you would come forward, state your name and address, you will have five minutes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Councilman. Glad to be here. I missed the last meeting like she did. Thank you, sir. Gift cards. Where are they? If you're still holding on to them, give them out. If, you, if you're still holding on to them, why are you holding on to them? And as long as you hold on to them, you're going to have a problem. There's no need of having a problem, and when people need them, everybody in Portland doesn't have them, so I don't know why they weren't given out. There's no reason why not. It's ridiculous to be talking about gift cards as long as they've been distributed. They should have been finished up on that. Second thing, lawsuits. I saw in the paper whereby our previous vice 
manager, city manager, is suing the, uh, suing the city. Now, I understand why she's suing the city. The city got deep pockets. But the thing I don't understand is how come they didn't name the city manager their father. I don't understand that, because usually that's the procedure. I don't understand that, which I told, which I said right here, that they never should have hired her, because there was a problem there in the beginning. Everybody looks for free money. Third, water bills. Our water bill is outrageous. There's no need to call up public utilities because it's never their fault. I don't know if it's that automatic readout or what. But you'd be doing all right if you're not taking a bath or drinking the water. But that's impossible. It doesn't make any sense how much money you spend on water as it used to be. Take some of that tax money that's coming from the casino, and probably some of that $300,000 that you wanted to spend on that audit and help people with their water bill or reduce it. <coughs> All right, next thing is the situation for is Bernard Griffin's play park over in Mount Hermon. I know a few councilmen know about it, but uh, they want to get some uh, some more things added there. And this and this and they run into a red block, a roadblock rather. And it's and it's unnecessary really to run into a roadblock, saying that the money has run out. I don't understand why the money's run out, but then again, though, money always runs out when you want to do something. But we have people that wants to donate and contribute, but they were told that you can't do that. And that is ridiculous. How can you not donate to the city and the city taking your tax money. You're not donating that. That's being taken. And if you don't pay it, then that's it. But the thing about it, though, is that they want you to not give. But think about it, when you want to up, go ahead and not do, it's not right. People <coughs> want to contribute to their own neighborhood. So I hope that gets straightened out. It's not going to cost that much money to get some grills. Thank you. Mr. Hammonds, if you just remember, uh, Councilman Moody, so you have the floor. Good evening, Mr. Hammonds. Thanks for being here. Uh, you mentioned the Bernard Griffin, uh, Griffin uh, yeah. playground. And uh, Mayor, I, I'd like to ask uh, for staff to look into that. Uh, apparently the capacity is uh, above the accommodations at the park to accommodate the the increased capacity so uh, if you could uh, look into it and uh, get back with council on a, a remedy thanks for bringing that up okay thanks for your service okay to our thank country thank you thank you mr. Hammonds All right. our next speaker is Martin Bayer Martin Bayer. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Martin Bayer. I live at, uh, sorry, <laughs> I live at 300 North Street, and I am one of the uh, Vice Presidents of the local Civic League for Old Town Portsmouth. I am here on behalf of uh, some of the re residents of Old Town Portsmouth, specifically those who live on Court Street. Um, the Court Street construction project has been an issue for a very long time. 
and it's something which I spoke about in the fall uh, to all of you. Um, we have consistently received updates from the city engineer's office um, that have been kind of piecemeal, um, and my constituency remains dissatisfied with the progression of the project and would very much like an end date to the entirety of the project when it is going to be completely finished uh, as opposed to continuous piecemeal updates, which I appreciate and they do as well, um, but it seems to be a continuous never-ending stream of small bits here and there. Um, so the ask here is a final end date uh, on the completion of this project. Uh, the citizens want their street back. Um, so that is all. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We'll, we'll have that looked into and we'll have it responded to, okay? The next speaker is Mr. Peter Vino. Peter Vino. Our last speaker for the evening is Mr. Hunter Morris. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Okay. Honorable Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, and members of Portsmouth City Council, tonight I am coming before you, c citizen concern as a safety for our school as you plan for your 2024 budget. <coughs> to increase the safety of our schools, I would like to see full-time metal protectors, resource officers, and additional cameras and hallways. Please keep those in mind as you prepare your budget. In addition, please enforce the drug-free zone around our schools. I know we've been through rough years and times. But our, but our best days are yet to come. Have faith and hope over fear and worries. Councilman Moody, sir, you have the floor. Mr. Morris. Yes, sir. And also Hunter, how are you? Thanks for being here. You, uh, you should have been at the public work session because our, our uh, school board, our superintendent, uh, did a great job in, in covering just about all your safety issues. So uh, you're, you're spot on in, in being an advocate for those things. And uh, uh, the superintendent, uh, uh, they're on his list. And I think this council is gonna certainly uh, support those types of things as well. Th thanks for being here. And Uncle Billy, I just want our kids to feel safe in school without being going home and telling his parents that something has happened to their children because that's the last thing that as we want is for to come home and our and, and the children come back and say something that they did this they did that but it's a concern to me for poor citizens i see a lot of people and <clears throat> is worried about their kids and as as a Portsmouth citizen I've been a Portsmouth citizen for almost 19 20 years <laughs> and I'm I'm pretty concerned about the kids being in school too but we need to fix these situations so that way their parents can feel safe again with their parents with their kids being in school them versus them going to work all day worried about what's going to happen to them. So you, true. You're spot on. Uh, we need uh, we need to to thank this consideration here of that we need to take more measure to secure the schools and, and for our kids and for those parents for the parents who who may be watching tonight. I got one more for you to say. It's that don't, don't, don't ever lose hope. Always have faith and don't ever fear. And God bless. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, Hunter, I, I must say I think that that was very appropriate. And with, with that, um, if there are no other matters to discuss, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>